Welcome to the report from Tonga Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with Tim Penhalerick. We're going to talk conspiracy and we're going to talk free thinking and at another undisclosed location, ladies and gentlemen. So stick around and listen. The report from Tiger Mountain. Hang around. Tim, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. Thank you, Richard. Now, Tim, some of you may have recognised uh, Tim here from, uh, and we'll do a little cut here, from some famous Daniel Andrews uh, um, uh, impersonations that went viral last year. Oh. So we're going to show a clip here, and then we'll come back and talk about that. So here's a clip. We're good to go? Okay. I'd first like to talk to you about, uh, uh, about a plan, uh, a brand new plan, which will, again, uh, again, uh, it will be... Uh, uh, a new plan for Victoria. Uh, my plan, uh, my roadmap, if you like, which might I suggest, uh, uh, let me make it very clear. Um, may I say unequivocally, uh, for the record, please, uh, please, uh, let it be very clear. It will be a very real plan. Uh, a plan to see us out of uh, where we are now, uh, and again, again, uh, uh, it'll be a plan to move us forward from where we are now. Uh, and might I add uh, that this plan will be a very detailed plan. So what, did you get any flack for uh, doing your Daniel Andrews uh, impersonations from anybody? Not at all, it was surprisingly <laughs> well received actually. It was Actually, hilarious. I, I uh, <laughs> just did it as a, a small video for some friends that I had on Facebook and yes. it, uh, it uh, went a lot more viral than I expected. So we did a couple more and I haven't done any for well, 12 months. It's or been so. over 12 months, I mean Daniel Andrews must be waiting for the next one. Eh? Do you think he enjoyed them? You know? I'm pretty sure he would have seen them. I've... I think they were funny, I think they were funny and I think even Daniel Andrews might have gotten a laugh out of it. Because mainly you, you kind of, you weren't necessarily mocking what he said, it was more um, into his mannerisms and things like that. You That's know? right. And, yeah. and it was, it was all some, in good fun, wasn't it? There was a little bit of salt and pepper in there. A little bit of salt and uh, pepper, yeah. But it was, yeah, generally just a, you know, lighten up people's day at the time, I think. It was a, a difficult time. And it's everyone. a good way to fight this kind of thing with humour, isn't it, I think, you know? I believe it is. Yes. It's always nothing better than a laugh. For you. Nothing better feeling. than a laugh, and I agree Absolutely. with it. Had me in stitches last year, and we were all sharing it wildly on Facebook. So, um, you know, I wanted to come down today and talk about what's going on and just to get your opinions, you know. So what do you, what do you think of this whole... Um, Crisis. Do you think you know it's really kind of over impeding on our on, on our rights and human rights? Obviously, we're you know we're, we've been in another lockdown, lockdown five in Victoria, and obviously New South Wales is still going through a, a shocking lockdown at the moment. You know that uh, seems to be going like it's going to go on for another couple of months. I think a lot of people would agree with me at the moment that mm. it's pretty hard to know exactly what to think. I mean, this has just been going on for such a long period of time, and it's sort of getting to a point where I think a lot of people see it as being it's. It's a little bit beyond a joke. Yes. Um, you know, maybe one lockdown, that was one thing, but it's you know continuously happening here in Australia. When you look around the rest of the world, um, you know, there is significant cases of COVID still increasing, yet people are coming out of it. Yes. There's all this talk about the vaccination and all that kind of thing, with the V word, we yeah. probably get censored for even just mentioning the yeah. word. But, well, you know, um, it's the world we live in now, isn't it? You know? you know, that one there, and there seems to be a big push for that. and. Uh, you know, it does seem strange to me that we're in this crisis, and that we had we've had diseases like COVID, which is like SARS and H1N1. For example, H1N1 killed twenty thousand people. At the moment, uh, COVID's only killed a thousand. But we had nothing like this kind of hysteria, nothing like this kind of um, uh, what's it called, uh, kind of rush to vaccinate mm. people for H1N1. I mean, you know, what do you think uh, could be behind the fact that you know, the the kind of uh, the powers that be have reacted in an almost over hysterical way to this? Well, I wonder whether it's more media focused or media um, fueled, yes, rather than you know maybe necessarily the the powers that we see, so yeah, the premiers and. And that kind Maybe of they're reacting to it. The media, the media seems yeah. to play a big role in this because well, they're, they're centralised on TV. If you jump on YouTube and look mm. through your YouTube feed, there's always the COVID updates every day, so it's in your it's face. It's like a clicker, you know. And it seems to be causing a lot of, you know, I talked about this on my Facebook and my mm. Instagram recently, just about fear. There seems to be a lot of fear peddling going on here. Why aren't they doing this with like heart attack or, or with like, you know, things related to alcoholism or, I mean, you know, because obviously more people die of all these things, cancer and things like this. There's no death ticker in relation to cancer, even though it kills way more people in Australia. 
you know, it's like, you know, I'll say anti-smoking or something like that. It's like, why this particular fear agenda have the government kind of like focused on? You know, this is what surprises me and makes me suspicious about the whole thing. And I think that's a great question. And I think that these are the kinds of questions that we all need to start at, uh, at asking. Yep. Um, we actually all need to start sitting there and thinking to ourselves, well, why? Why this one? Let's have a look at the numbers and let's have a look at the actual death rate and the... Uh, you know, uh, the infection rates. Yes. And what are they like, mathematically? Is it really something to be so scared of when you do compare them to things like heart disease and lung cancer and, you know, other kinds of ep epidemics? Yes, well, this, this seems to be the case, you know, and, and obviously you see a lot of independent um, thinkers and stuff online, obviously, which this show is one, um, you know, trying to come to terms with this. But, you know, again, it, it's all alternative media, which obviously, obviously mainstream media told me not to watch any of this kind of stuff. Oh, it's all conspiracy laden and this and that. But I mean, I think it's hard to, to judge that there isn't something strange going on. I mean, obviously, too, when, you, when this virus originated, it came out of Wuhan in China. And obviously Donald Trump famously called it the China virus. But, you know, it should be remember that it wasn't China that locked us in our homes. It was our own government and our own media that did all this. Yeah. And, and it's weird too that China has gone back to normal. They had some lockdowns in the beginning that obviously got everybody in the lockdown kind of uh, in a mode of thinking, so to speak. Remember when there were people just falling over dead in the mm. street from COVID? I mean, that's nonsense. Yeah, well, that's that never happened anywhere that. else in the yeah. world. That was clearly a psyop, right? So anyway, in the beginning, there was all this hysteria out of China, and then there's been nothing. They have, they're holding concerts with 100,000 people in Wuhan now. Yeah. Well, how can it just vanish? There's been no normal. Delta strain. I know. Yeah. It's strange. The you Delta know? strain. It's yeah. an interesting one, isn't it? it? Is it even real? You could have it. Uh, you you know, could have it. no symptoms, but you know, you that, could have it. That's the key symptom. Not, not having any domain. symptoms really? you know, is a key symptom. Yeah. And we've got a special off-camera guest here today, Alien Octopus. You know, he didn't out. want to appear on here camera because clearly uh, the, the powers of B are desperate to get his photograph. <laughs> and Alien Octopus is here. Not the Alien Octopus, Alien Octopus. So any questions for us from, uh, from the Octopus uh, corner? So if China's opened up so much, what's the vaccine uptake there? Ah, good question. Well, uh, isn't it around 70%? So... I've heard it's about 70%. But and which vaccine are they it. using? You know, are they using the Chinese one? It's probably like a, you know, like a, what's it called? When you give somebody a kid that's got nothing, placebo. Saline, saline. Is, it, is it a saline? Just, is it just mm. water? Because they don't want to poison their own population? Or are they also doing a depopulation trip on their own people? Octopus, what are your, what's your opinion there? Well, then we go into the Sputnik as well, don't we, with Russia? Back to Sputnik? I didn't, Russian, I didn't see that Russian, coming. Uh, well, yes, yeah. it is back to Russia to some extent. Um, what's Russia doing during? They have their own vaccine as well, don't they? That's right. So, But if China's gone back to just being normal, as you say, yes. is it through a vaccine program that they've done this? Is, it, is this all about a vaccine well, drive? Is that what they've done in the UK? Is it about Didn't a the UK have Freedom Day a couple of days ago? And they have they have actually had a wide vaccine uptake, is it right? They've had eighty percent of people take it. I believe it, yeah, it's very high. And in Australia, it's low. We we're, we're only at like 11. people have had yeah their well, first shot. It's like ten percent. It's probably going and up every people day. People have had their first is like thirty. But obviously, after this uh, latest hysteria, there's going to be more people who've taken the shot. But it still appears almost like sixty percent of Australians haven't had the vaccine. Yeah. So this is why they're so upset with us. I think that's why we're getting the special punishment of go to your room for well, three the, months. Well, you the know? media is blaming that on supply. Or or at least, you know, the premiers are blaming it on that supply. That could be bullshit, mate, couldn't it? Could be. People don't want it. You go into these, you know, like Jeff shared. Maybe there's less people that want it than we think. I think there's a lot less. Australians are particularly anti... Um, What's the word? Anti-authoritarian, I guess, really. Yeah. We are a kind of people who love freedom and we don't like... There's a bit of a Nick Kelly spirit, you know, in yeah. to us. You know, we don't like the traps and we don't like, uh, you know, people telling us what to do. And I think there's a definite rebellious... Streak still yeah, within Australia, and yeah. I think you're seeing a lot of that come out in this lockdown. So we've got a we've got a shortage of the vaccines. Why are they? Why have they gone and turned around the Western world and said we'll give a billion doses to third world countries? If there's, a, if, if, there's a, if there's a shortage in the uh, why are we Western giving away world? our vaccines why, to all these? Why, yeah. why have they turned around and said these countries we, where we people pledge. are dropping dead anyway from every other disease under the sun? And of course, that's all being blamed on COVID. It was like this recent crisis in um, in India. I know a friend of mine, he runs a DVD shop, he's Indian and he's got family. I said, look mate, in India people are dropping dead all the time anyway. He said, what recently happened in India was not was out not of the ordinary.